Hello guys, it's the Generator, and today we're playing State of Decay 2. Last episode, we built up an infirmary to help out a boy with his hepatitis C, I mean blood plague, and so this episode we're going to go find some meds to help supply that same infirmary. I want to go search around a bit more. So, the soft storage was just research, but we have a Dirty Bird Espresso. Oh boy, what a name. Let's go check this little thing out. It's like a little kiosk area. Right, no zombies to be seen nearby. Shouldn't be a problem. Let's go ahead and open up the door. Oh, what do we got here? Would you like going to steal copper out of this? All right, let me... Um, come on, there we go. Good boy. Alright, let's steal this stuff pretty quickly. We did alert zombies nearby. Yep, there they come. Um, I'm just gonna run, I think. We're gonna head back to our <laughs> home base over here, and if we do have to engage these zombies, at least we'll have friends to help us out. Oh shit! He really just came upon me. I did not expect that at all. <laughs> Don't choke around like that. All right, select the firmary and then check on your plague-ridden friend. So I guess we go inside the infirmary to, to check that. Let me double check this. We'll go to M, base, infirmary, stabilize blood plague. So I can do it either way. I did hear a zombie enter inside. One of the zombies was following us in. Either we find more meds or we stop getting sick. Okay, apparently the zombie's already taken care of. That's good. Alright, so heading back to the infirmary over here. We have the same mini as before, so that's good to know. Um, negative two meds per day for treatment. And let's go ahead and get Ian treated over here. I'm just making sure I didn't accidentally get infected myself. All right, so looking at the blood plague, um, this is what happens. Basically, the person just kind of halts progress on the disease. We need to find a cure or create a cure to save their lives. But if not, then we might have to do what needs to be done. Just take him out. And uh, we certainly don't want to do that to our boy, but if we have to, we will. Certainly. So now he's just going to chill over here in this small little neighborhood area. Uh, friendly neighbor. Okay, so we have some neighbors over here next to this garage, and there's only one person just kind of sitting by himself in the enclaves. So let's go and check this out. We do have a bit of an advantage uh, when it comes to manpower here. We'll actually go ahead and take some bandages to top off our health. Alright, this door kind of sucks, so we'll just kind of avoid it for the future. So what's the best way over here? We can follow the road around. Oh no, we can go straight. Cool. So this road should be able to follow just over here. We'll keep our flashlight on. It's pretty dark out here. And we'll check this over here before we go. Uh, you never know. We might be able to find a gun or something like that in here. That'd be pretty cool, right? Um, getting some more firearm. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, the P220. Um... It's a 9mm, and uh, we already have a 9mm, I believe. No, it is 22, so it's a higher caliber, but we have 14 rounds, and we got some more parts. So that's pretty sick. We don't want to switch to it quite yet, because I assume the 9mm is going to have a much larger um, noise radius than my 22. Let's sneak up behind a zombie here. I went shooting and um, I shot a uh, MP Shield um, Smith & Wesson 9mm last, this past weekend. And it was a lot of fun. I went for the full size instead of the compact pistol. And it was something that I was able to like control the recoil pretty well. Really fun. Um, I've shot 9mm 45 and uh, 
38, 357, and I have to say the 9 mil is probably my favorite out of them all, um, just because I'm able to control it really well. So now we're going to go talk to Kilo over here, our new neighbor. Um, I like that little name. It's kind of like a sarcastic little jab at like old society and how things used to be. So let's talk to Kilo here. Hey, how's it going? So I don't know if you noticed, but we have a lot of zombies infesting a nearby building. We'd both be safer if you helped me clear them out. Sure, I can do that. Uh, can you help us out with some medicine? Sounds like a plan. Okay, so infestations. They are dangerous, and they can spread if you don't keep them in check. Infestations are created by screamers who attract other zombies. To remove an infestation, kill the screamer at the site of the zombies. Or, and clear the site of the zombies. Infestations like this are pretty dangerous. If you need some extra ammunition, I have a few rounds to spare. If you don't clear out infestations now and again, they spread all over. Then they become a serious problem. Right. So let's take him up on trading. Got anything useful you're looking to unload? Um, we definitely want to get yeah, as much right. ammunition as possible right now. Some more 22 rounds. And it appears that's all he has. But that's perfectly fine. What's our influence at? 135. So we can definitely afford that. Um, those rounds would be pretty invaluable for the future. So like I said before, primary influence, or the primary currency is influence. And you can gain influence by completing goals, trading, and other stuff. And you can spend influence on radio commands and trading. Um, and you can also use it for like crafting and stuff like that. So um, let's see where this infestation is exactly. Ooh, it's actually in our neck of the woods. So we'll go over here to the abandoned clinic and clear it out. And that'll help us go and grab some more medical supplies while taking out the infestation. So that's kind of best of both worlds. Looking at our pistol here, we're going to reload actually. Um, so we have 10 plus 1 right now. But yeah, um, went shooting this past weekend. It was a lot of fun. And I would definitely recommend it uh, for anyone else who is able to, to go to a range and shoot. Uh, of course, if you are not experienced, you want to be with an experienced instructor. But it's something that is an uh, experience I would recommend to anyone. So we can run along this road over here. This is going to be quite a trek for us, passing by our home base first and then going along. Let's see. So we can follow the road all the way over. We can also just cut through the cell phone tower, which we discovered before. Man, the screen is dark right now. And it's not the gamma either. I remember reading about State of Decay 2 and how they really wanted to focus on nighttime and, um, I guess, creating fear. And you can see the the lights of those eyes over there. And I don't know how that luminescence works as far as the biology. It's a zombie game after all, so it's not going to be super accurate. But um, it does make me think a little bit so we'll turn off our flashlight and okay. grab in the air first can. Take out the screen first okay he Otherwise, noticed us oh shit he just bit me no one ever bites me get down fucking bitch okay I went to go grab again cool let me really bad about that Checking out what we got over here. About 40 meters away now, pretty close. So let's definitely take out the screamer first. Only one screamer, and we have seven other uh, pleb zombies around. That screamer sees me. It's bad news. bashing in the door over there, but I don't actually see the screamer right now. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little, a little worried right now. So, turning on our flashlight only when we need to. Kind of check our corners and make sure no one flanks us over here. So, we do see the zombie on the side. Hopefully, he can walk by and we can take him out easily. We don't want him to attract too much attention, so we'll actually back up a little bit. Gila, what are you doing? Round two. I don't know yet if the flashlight actually matters for stealth, but I don't want to take any chances, right? Or 
right, let's do a self kill on this guy. Whew. I am nervous. I am really, really nervous. All right, there are some zombies off to the left. We do not want to attract them. Um, I don't know the best way to go about this next part. We just have to go in there. I haven't noticed this. All right, we're drawing one of them out. I think this will help. Right, he's dead. I thought he was still on the ground. Um... This is not good. We need to take out the Screamer first. Well, we need to identify... Oh, shit. Where did they all come from? Um, Alright, just keep spamming, spam, spam. Okay, that's not good. Alright, I'm just going to be swinging away. Just hitting everything. Alright, we got him. Where is the Screamer? He's in the other room. Alright, Screamer was taken out by Kilo. We did not actually find the Screamer in time. He was in the other room. That's damn fine work. Okay, I... Yeah, here was the Screamer. So he was nearby. He did see me, but we couldn't do much about it. The only way in here was <laughs> the door right there. <laughs> but we didn't go around that side. Um, so we found some no ethanol jugs. This. That doesn't really help us. So we are looking for medical supplies. Let's talk to Kilo for a second. He's probably going to be like, hey, thanks for this. Um, thanks. One of our group isn't doing so well. Blood plague? Yeah, I've lost friends to that too. You should know that medicine just delays the inevitable. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. We know how to cure it. We just need to keep my buddy alive until we can make the cure. You have a cure for blood plague? Damn. I wish I'd have met you folks a month ago. Some of my friends might still be alive. We don't actually have the cure on hand just yet. We need to gather one more ingredient before we can craft it. What do you need? Maybe I can help. This may sound crazy, but we need tissue samples from plague zombies. We have a few samples from this army lab back at the refugee camp, but the dog says we need more. So, you need plague zombies, huh? I can point you in the right direction. Take it easy. Alright, so Kilo is on his way, and hopefully we will be too. Corpse to be seen. Uh, we'll just check inside this crate over here. We want to try to find some medical supplies. We're checking in this surgery room on the side. Um, energy drink. We can... No way I can fit this. ...not take it. Um, we'll finish up our last well, bandage over here and kind of top off our health, and we'll check this little cabinet here. I don't think this will be carrying our supplies we're looking for, but hey, you never know. Tube of fireworks. I do not want to pick that up. At least not now. Um, maybe in here? So the potential resources is parts and ooh, medical supplies. There we go. That's it. And we also got this like kit. Um, we'll finish searching this place. I think we'll make this place an outpost. So the way State of Decay 1 worked is that you could create an outpost in a certain area. Uh, for example, if you... Nowhere for that to I can't go. pick that up now. Um, if you made an outpost where you had medical supplies, it would give you medical supplies over time. So that was a good way to kind of have a re, um, renewable way to get supplies. So we'll see if we can do that here. We don't actually have enough supplies. Yeah, so it does provide one med supply for every day. Um, and then the regular outpost stuff. Oh. Provides with meds twice daily, but it says one per day. So which one's right? I don't know. Uh, we don't have the influence right now, but we'll certainly get there at some point. All right, cardio level is now level two. Pretty cool. Um, that'll help us sprint a little bit faster. We can engage in longer combat. Stuff like that is pretty useful, obviously. Um, 
yeah, we're heading on the way back, and we're pretty good to go. It does sound like we have a pretty big fight ahead of us soon. We do have to go and collect blood samples for our boy Ian. Go much longer without a rest. All right, my guy's pretty tired. He is carrying a lot of gear, so we'll have to worry about that. Um, just kind of keeping that stamina bar down. All right, let's we're drop off our supplies. Right That's not a good plan. 